years after COVID-19, we should actually be showing data and evidential proof of the reasons why we are protected. Look, in the next three to four years, you see that school in London called the London School of uh, Tropical Hygiene and whatever, whatever. They will start graduating Africans with MSc and PhD on the reasons why Africans did not die from COVID-19. Then all of you will be doing online, will be doing, I have masters in COVID-19. Uh, because I know there's usually not, no time, I, I usually recognize those that I work with. If you see my, this slide, you see those that I work with and the invitation I got from PSN. Thank you for inviting me. Um, actually, if not that my, someone I call my twin brother is the chairman of CPC, I won't be doing this presentation because if you tell me that my presentation is 1 p.m., and you are calling me on at 5 p.m., I will not be there. Uh -huh. So those that are supposed to be online, if they are not there, I'm not surprised. But uh, I have to come because it's IG. Okay, so these are the students. So they, what, what was the objective of this interaction? It is aimed to challenge the Nigerian pharmacies to innovate for national development or be ready to go extinct. We should innovate or be ready to continuously stay here and then organize reception party for the arrival of vaccine at our airports and dance. And then set up committees in the ministries of health, in our agencies, that yes, we are about to do procurement, buying and selling. I call it buying and selling. And the truth is that you don't need to go to school to buy and sell. Okay, so let's see. Africa, um, we know that. A match after was cons uh, 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 consummated. Um, then, in 2009, South Africa launched this, uh, the fourth industrial revolution. Um, Africa's economy is dominated by agriculture. Um, supposedly, uh, Nigeria is the largest country in Africa. Uh, that means if we say Africa is dominated by agriculture in terms of economy, it means Nigeria should be leading in agriculture. Is it true? The World Economic Forum was launched. Okay, so let's look quickly at this uh, uh, situational analysis of who we are. Um, look at this. Uh, even when the DG Nabdak was talking this morning, she said she meant that 70% of um, drugs are imported. I'm wondering where the study was done. Uh, is, because WHO also says 70%. I don't know if IGR and her group in the ministry also say 70%. I, don't, I, I want to know how we arrive at 70%. Because which of the drugs do we make in Nigeria? So why is it, 100%, why is it 70%? 30%, we make 30% of drugs in this country. Please, what's the name of that drug? Because I don't think we make anything. So nobody should toast you and make you happy, make you excited as a pharmacist. Uh, because look, at, they say 4,000 of us are gathered in River State, right? And we don't make any drug. Sorry. So 100% of diagnostics are imported, 100% of everything. 100% of everything. We beg to even collect vaccine. Okay. Um, is he hanging? Is he hanging? Is he hanging? So. If it's hanging, I have my own. So, <laughs> yes, now I came prepared too. I say, if the thing hang, I'll use my own. Okay, so, so I, I quickly wanted us to see the body. See, let's look at the body of disease. Look at the body of uh, disease. Okay, health is wealth. We said health is wealth, yes. It's no longer a new saying. If you look at the body of disease, we are the owner of malaria in the world, right? We, there's no argument about that. Are you aware that there's now malaria vaccine approved by WHO? Are we aware that there's malaria vaccine? Are we aware that clinical trials were done in at least three countries in Africa? Are we aware? Are we aware that Nigeria was one of the countries where the clinical trials was done? Are we aware that Nigeria was one of the countries where the clinical trials was done? Are you aware that they are about to buy vaccines for you in Nigeria? Are you aware that you are a market for vaccines that come from other places? Well, lie. It's a shame. It's a shame. Because we will we, we just be doing giant of Africa, sitting down, Gomor. 
where I come from, they, when they say, when your father or your mother insult you and say that you are sitting down, that's chiagomo. It means that you are a fool. If your parent tell you, look at you, you are just sitting down on that chiagomo. It means you are a fool. We are just sitting down in this country, gomo, waiting to buy, to buy things that other people are doing. The truth is, those things that they send to us is outcome of research and development in those countries, so... Are you not aware that the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is research from Oxford University? Oxford University is not a private university. Are you aware that at the time Professor Crane and his group came up with the COVID vaccine, AstraZeneca vaccine, the one we are celebrating, are you aware that ASU was on strike in Nigeria? And, 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 and we, have a, we have a leadership that didn't care. Eh, let them go now. Africa contains two fight dependent. I, I don't hope my 15. Okay, so the global farmer supply chain is vulnerable to China and to a less extent on India. Every country had uh, out of stock drugs. China supplies most raw materials and active pharmaceutical ingredients. India is critically dependent on China. Um, national security risk for all countries. This quote, I'm taking it from Professor Joseph Fortunak, who was a keynote speaker in our conference last week. We had a conference last week where Professor Simbajo uh, attended. Um, okay, so this is the uh, stages of manufacturing. You are pharmacist, so let me not spend my 15 minutes here. Um, okay, consider malaria. So let's look at malaria quickly. Um, how many billions of economic loss due to malaria every year? Greater than 2.6%. Where did malaria medicines come from? Chloroquine, amodafine, mefloquine, artemisinin, and halofantrine all from plants as a result of disasters. Which disaster are we in now? Look at artemisinin from the farm where the plant is to the pharmacy. Okay, so let's look at our natural resources. I've decided to have, to have you look at this list. Look at the list of plants that you find here. The, this whole list of plants. We have provided evidential proof that none of the uh, 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 that artemisinin Artemisia annua is not better than any of these plants, about 23 of it, here in Nigeria. They are all here in Nigeria, our own. And these are the products that we have developed from them. Okay, so let's quickly look at uh, this one. It is said that the goal of the national health policy that we should be within our available resources. Where is Meg? Is Meg in the hall? If Meg, okay, Meg is in the hall. Meg is one of my disciples. Why am I saying it's one of my disciples? I was glad when she was making a presentation and she made a comment that I made in the U.S. and made a lot of people angry. That when you talk about tradition, and I've told you, Ajia, I'm saying it here again, publicly, that traditional and complementary medicine, it is wrong for you to call our own products in Nigeria, our own traditional medicine, our own herbal medicines, it is wrong to call it complementary medicine. You know why? Because even WHO, that you people always dance and quote everything. You know, if you want to know how... I, I hope I'm protected, sir. Okay. If you want to know how hollow we, some of us are, you, you, you just see the way that once they say WHO has approved this thing, then if you, don't, you don't want to know, you don't want to ask any question again. You do not want to ask any question again. This same person that does not want to ask question when WHO has given approval, if they tell that person anything in the mosque, if imam tells the person anything in the mosque that is from Quran, or the pastor tells the person anything that is from the Bible, he will argue it, oh, he will say, my friend, I know how to read Bible. I know how to read. Where did God say it? He will be arguing that one. But the one, the WHO, what are you arguing? Wait, let me finish. You know me and you, we always engage in this thing. And I told you that. You are talking now because you left Nada. When you were in Nada, you were not saying anything now. You, you, you are not saying anything. When you were in Nada, you were not talking. All of you will be waiting to retire. When you retire, you start talking. Talk when you are in government. Let them sack you. Go back to your house. When you retire, you start talking. Why are you waiting to retire before you talk? So this is our body. As we are talking today, we are planning to do census. We are planning to do census. What is our population? Ask people here now. 
Everybody is calling one figure or the other. We are always calling figures. These are the ways we are calling figures. WHO will call one, UNO will call one, PSN will call one, NAPA will call his own, then IG will call his own. Some of the Nigerian health indicators are fairly poor compared to other countries. Why? Because we have become slaves. I call it modern slavery. If you have listened to me on national media, I call it modern slavery. Because the slavery that our ancestors went through were that they put chains on their hands and on their legs and shipped them to U.S., ship them to, 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 to Europe and all the places that they were able to ship them to. The slavery of our time is that you sit down with all your education and they tell you you cannot do it. They tell you you don't know it. They tell you that it is the one they did and brought, that that is the one that is good. You are a slave. What the force about farm from farm to pharmacy? What's the force about it? This is what it is. Translational research. From bench to bedside, you can call it that way. Translational research, you can call it to, that way. But we decided to rebrand it this year and say from farm to the pharmacy because we want to concentrate on our own raw materials, on what is indigenous to us, on what we have that we don't, don't need to beg anybody. We talk too much. How long are we going to continue to talk? Even DJ Nabdak, when she, when she gave keynote address today, where is um, uh, Rameto and Monica, who are the powerful directors in, that should be telling DJ Nabdak? When she talked today, did she mention anything about phytomedicine? She did not. She did not. We have vaccine. Let me tell you, we have vaccine. Oh. Uh -huh. Our vaccine is in the bush. Our vaccine is in the bush. If you are a pharmacist, if you are a pharmacist, let me tell you. Let me unfortunately for those of you who are very angry with me right now, unfortunately for you, I'm a professor. Yes, unfortunately. You know why I say it's unfortunate? It's unfortunate because you cannot go and now gossip that I don't know what I'm saying. It is just that you will now be scared. He's saying what I probably don't understand. And I, that is the level I am. Because I became, a prof, a, I became a professor before I decided to go that way. That's the difference. And that's why the China and the India that we are all rushing to today, go and see how they are, they are, they are, they are utilizing their raw material. When they say they were not giving us chloroquine, look at how we all got disoriented. So, research is meant to tackle unresolved issues. Normally, what we do in academia is that we do our study, we publish, and we get excited, we dance, we get promoted, right? Then somehow, within the way, some other people could just stumble on your publication and also make products from it. So the target was not product development. If you go to Rambagzi in India, the Department of Intellectual Property has a lot of PhD holders, at least 25 of them as of 2012. And what they do is to mine literature and see the work has been done so that they can come up with uh, products. And at the other end, the clinician or industrialist will always consult, we always consult the research lab, explain issues to them. We call it industry or clinic-driven research. As Napa chairman, I came to Lagos. I spent one week in Lagos, went around all the pharmaceutical industries. One of the big pharmaceutical industries here, uh, Mopsin Pharmaceutical, uh, Dr. Paul told me how he will not make anything. That because if he makes anything, the one that comes from abroad will always be cheaper than that one. Minister of Health, that's what Paul said. A new research project will then be born and it will be a clear final target. So this is what we call translational research. The main character is this. It is initiated by need. It is conducted with a solution in mind. Then, application of the result of a research project, which is the final step, is not as simple as it may sound. Now, you, you know it's not, right? Okay, so because there will be knowledge transfer. Then there is a need for knowledge transfer and then physiological result, physiological result of a translational research is a product. So, if we look at diagnostic tools, medical products, and drugs, then you will need to have patents. If you have patents, you will need to have your technology ready for. Now, and this we have, for example, um, 
Nypreet, for example, has done this twice to Zikem Pharmaceuticals and May and Baker, where we had to do technology transfer of our product, and that's why they went to market with it. So the challenge to bring all of this practice uh, is either a spin-off or a startup. In our compound at Edu, we have a spin-off. Okay, and that's what should happen. Every investor, for example, should have spin-off facilities. So, and NAVDAC should facilitate such spin-off facilities. I've told Madam anyway. A new substance, pharmacone, needs to now be produced on large scale. That is where a pilot scale-up is needed. And then the expensive clinical trials. But the truth is, as we are seated here, you saw many of you, you know, I was very attentive to Professor Adeye's lecture. When she was telling us about how Nigeria is the only country that is actually monitoring the vaccine use. Let me tell you, those of you who are very happy and clapping hand, you are doing free clinical trial. Uh, in, in pharmacy school, that's what we, we are teaching now. Uh, they say it's phase four. Uh, will you do phase three? Will you do phase four without phase three? Will you do phase four without phase three? Uh -huh. Where is phase three that was done? Phase three was done in other countries, in, 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 in NAPSA countries. Phase three was done there. Then they now tell me that, that my sister is a Nigerian now, that since she has used it, that means they have tested it on Martins. Do you eat apple? Do you eat apple? Is it not burger you are eating in America? Then you come and tell me, don't you know that burger and apple affect outcome of uh, use of drugs? Uh huh? Then you come and tell me because you have tested. Uh, why, why, why didn't you come here where we are many? Why are you using where there are very few? Because you know why? During clinical trial, the drugs are given out free. You know why? During clinical trial, infrastructure is built. They say we don't have facilities for clinical trial. You come and build it. You, company, come and build it. Because it's also market for you. Are you not going to sell it in our country? If we say, if we say Nigeria, Aja, if Ministry of Health said we are not buying that malaria vaccine, I, be, I bet you, don't, they will run and say, okay, what do you want us to do? They will say, what do you want us to do? Then you will say, do clinical trial here. Then they say, but you don't have the building, the equipment. Oh yeah, bring it. Come and be. You see in India, you know why they do all those things in India? Common Coca-Cola. You cannot make it in, and bring it to India. You must come and put your factory in India. Everything will be done in India. Do you know why the sugar in your... Kai, I don't have time. Okay, so there is substance conceptual difference. The letter is initiated by unmet need. So succeeding in... Um, is, are you thinking what I'm thinking? You know, if you see the letter that is flying around, some letters are flying around where... Um, is it consultant Dr. Neo? I be Professor Dr. Neo, I be clinician Neo that they wrote, I be his enemy, I don't know again, but there, some people wrote that uh, pharmacies cannot be taught by medical doctors because it's, they did not participate in forming pharmacy curriculum. When I read it, I said, is it that I don't understand English? Who is saying doctors should come and train pharmacists now? Are you a doctor going to train a pharmacist so that you will become a pharmacist doctor, a doctor pharmacist, or farm doctor? What is he going to become? Because he has entered the world, he will just become doctor. Oh, that means nutritionists that are entering the world to tell people the type of food to be eating. They are now trained by doctors, they become doctor. Abi, do you know why it's painful to them? I will not tell you. You, 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 you just stay there and be waiting for me. Basic and clinical research are interdependent. So this is the summary. This is the summary of how... Look at, okay, let's look at... Quickly, let's look at African challenges. Inequality. I don't need to say this much. Poor agricultural productivity. I don't need to say this much. And don't tell me about insecurity. Even without insecurity, we had poor agricultural. So 2.4 billion people by 2050... Africa will become 2.4 billion people. The highest, the, the country with the highest population now is, is how many? 1.4 billion, and that's China. 1.4 billion, which means it is possible. And you know they are not growing uh -huh, because they are not born in the way we are born in. Uh -huh. so, so because we, we are just born in anyhow, uh, 
2.4 billion 2050. So we will be more than China. Eh? As we are talking now, the entire 53 or 54 countries in Africa put together, put together is 1.2 billion. The entire 54 countries in Africa put together is 1.2 billion. China alone with one president is 1.4 billion. That means the entire of China, the population is more than Africa. India is 1.27 billion. We are approximating it to 1.3 billion. India is, India is also more than Africa. It's, it's, it's if you have one wife and two children and your neighbor has three or four wives with 10 children and you are borrowing from your neighbor, you are a Today's fragmented efforts must be turned into a cohesive approach. Public-private partnership is the way to go. And then commercialization is one of the things, actually it's not good to prepare slides and not have time to talk about it. Um, but it's okay. We should incubate our proven technology and do a pilot scale up if we want to. So let's get home here. Okay, so this is um, a picture that I took from our Department of Medicinal Plant Research and Traditional Medicine. This is one of our staff and this woman. Many of you drank the things prepared by this woman. So many of you that are wearing coat and tie today, doing I am a pharmacist, I am a professor, I am a medical doctor, you drank this thing, no? Instead of you to now think of how you can utilize your knowledge of today to make what this woman is doing better, you are there raising your shoulder for nothing. So, this, some of you here, you have had accidents before, and the man was pulling your, instead of pulling your leg, was pulling the leg of a chicken, and you are crying. Today you are walking. Why your counterpart's leg was amputated? You don't know that it is African culture, and it's interesting, and it is something you should develop. Stay there and be looking for WHO to come and do it for you. How will the results be disseminated? So we came up with Niclovix. Niclovix is now marketed by May and Baker. We call it Niprisan. It came from a traditional medical practitioner. This is what is Niclovix for us. We have so many other products at Niprid. Um, we were just, uh, when COVID-19 came, we came out with this, Andographis paniculata. We had come up with this, submitted to NAVDAC. By the time NAVDAC was, give, was yet to give us a, a NAVDAC a, 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 a number, um, uh, uh, in fact, you people know what happened. Then they immediately after the minister came and said, okay, let us drink the medicine. We all drank it on television. Then Nimet Pharmaceutical, we were about to sign off this. And then uh, this, these are also many of our products. They are all there. They are all there. We are doing our own. We are not the one to say. All of you who are in the industry, you know, let me tell you, you know, all of you in the industry, you know you don't like this thing, but... You just be pretending. Very few of you like it. You don't like it because importation is, is the one you are making serious money so that you can be buying Jeep and be building upstairs. You don't know that it is better to do something to affect life for people because everybody will soon, will soon die. Uh -huh. Entrepreneur, engine driven. So, but right now, we, are, we, we have some good uh, interaction right now. PS, look at PMG Man, for example. PMG Man, we want to put it on record that PMG Man has given Naipri 10 million naira. Naip gave na uh, us 2.5 million naira, and we're able to come up with products like this who are, that are on their way to registration. PSN, PSN under Mazi and his team has also just given 6 million naira about a few weeks ago to Nipreed, and then we have a very serious product that is coming out to, for PSN now. Then uh, I and my team, we were privileged to uh, approach a grant, uh, a grant we did to develop products for malaria, TB, and diabetes. It's not for Nigeria. When we do it, we give, we give it to the people that give us the money. So we were able to get this. And then um, as part of our activities, we train younger ones um, uh, so that by the time, because what you are hearing from most of these young ones now is that they want to jackpa. I, I ask them, what is jackpa? They say jackpa means to go abroad. Uh -huh. So I have some of them. One of them is here with me. Uh, so now they are, they are using these sophisticated equipments that can only be found in some of those countries. They are using it in our lab before you go. All of these things you are seeing here are in our lab at Idu in that bush. So Ted Fund, 
has also given us some funding. So we have product from Tech Fund. NABDAC has already given us the registration uh, for this. And uh, the Nigeria Academy of Science came to do a monitoring of it. These are the powerful people from Nigeria Academy of uh, Science. Then uh, the first lady of Nigeria called us. He said that he was impressed with what we are doing, that he, want, that he gave us a history of something that is happening in, his, in her village and said we should develop it into the product. Within a few months, we did it and we gave it to her. You can see the evidence there. Then the chairman house committee on health is a medical doctor, Dr. Tanko Sununu. He also told us that there's a disease in his area that he wanted us to develop something. We went to Bauchi Abi, we collected it, we have developed the product, we have given it to him. You people should sit down here. Just sit down here. Uh -huh. Then Artemisia Anwa, this is where we eat. This is the kind of thing we want to have. Ajia, we know you are an expert in cultivation. I don't know what you are still doing in the ministry. Now, this is our own medicinal plant. Uh -huh. you, you, all of you who work in the industry, go and see herbal medicine industry in China. You will see that your own cannot compete with you. You that you are doing conventional and you are coming to tell us that if you drink, you, when they give you COVID-19 vaccine, you should drink it by ibuprofen. Uh -huh. uh, uh, go to where they are doing herbal medicine and see. So let me conclude quickly by having a way forward. So this is the way we think something can happen, service delivery, and most importantly, leadership and governance. Leadership and governance at all levels is very key. In any innovative society, it's a thinking society. I believe the solution to all our problems is within our environment. If we are serious, if we have a vision, strategic, and then we put a systematic uh, approach to it. I hear everyone saying these days, we must think outside the box. I've been looking for the box. I'm here to find the box. So let's avoid territorial tendencies. The man, and I'm not the one who said this, the man who farms as his forefathers did cannot produce much food, no matter how rich the land is or how hard he works. So let's not do. Last week, we invited Osimbajo. He came. He attended our conference, Professor Yemi Osimbajo. A few years ago, we asked Good Love Jonathan, come and see what we are doing. He came, he attended. Any new president, we will do again. We will invite them. They will come. You people wake up. Thank you very much. <laughs> that is, that is the vibrant Professor Emeje. I'm not surprised. Uh, he wants to tell us that yes, Farm to pharmacy can be a reality. How I wish Zainab Sharif is here. Oh, you are there. You must talk. <laughs> yes. So uh, keep your questions. We will allow you to ask questions. He has taken the place of Dr. Binduri. That is why I'm quiet. But Professor Morris, you is online. I hope uh, you can connect uh, Professor Morris you. You see there? And then you will be the first to talk. I know what you have been doing from farm to pharmacy. And it is really a reality where the whole, the whole world, they are going towards nutraceuticals. And I know they are saying nutraceutical annually is up to about 200 and $50 billion, and Nigeria should not be left behind. Nigerian pharmacies must take it over. I know so many non-pharmacies are going into farm to pharmacy, and they are using pharmacies to formulate. And they all run to NIFRIDGE for standardization and NAVDAC for registration. So definitely, pharmacies will have to show the world that yes, we can do it, especially this COVID-19 pandemic has opened our eyes. Our eyes. So many populations, we understand it can boost immune system. And there are so many similarities between COVID-19 and malaria. That is why so many people, when they take anti-malaria, I'm sure you talk something about that. You will see that you get relief. So, but uh, I will allow you to ask questions. And then Professor Emeje, I'm sure I will be ready. And Zainab Sharif will shed more light because I know she pioneered the horticulture, planting all the medicinal plants. And she's a great advocate. And right now she's a director of alternative medicine 
at the Federal Minister of Health. Professor Morrissey, are yes, you sir. ready? We want to I'm see ready. your face. Professor Can you hear me? Very good. Professor Morrissey yes. is a professor of pharmacognosy. If you like, you can say professor of plants, medicinal plants. He is the CEO or president of Bioresources Development and Conservation Program. And he was the former INEC chairman of Great Nigeria. It is my privilege and honor to invite Professor Morris Yu to talk to the audience of this 94th Annual National Conference of Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria for 10 minutes so that we'll allow the audience to ask questions. You are welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. I will try to make it uh, shorter than that. Uh, uh, it's going to be a difficult, uh, but just to thank you very much for allowing me this uh, audience to talk to, and to thank Professor Emeje for that very brilliant presentation and for facilitating my uh, participating in this meeting. I'm going to say just three things uh, around my, my presentation. One is to be able to uh, discuss what happens in the farm if you intend to make the farm for the purpose of med making medicines. The second will be to tell you the pathway we have taken uh, to be able to do that. The third will be to give you some examples of some successful uh, from farm to pharmacy issues. Uh, I made the examples last so that whenever I'm caught up with them, I can drop it at that. Yeah, I made the point that uh, if we want to go into farm to pharmacy, you have to decide ab initio whether you are select active masculine ingredient or you are farming the substance for drug production. For the first one, then you can then use all, all manner of uh, inputs, fertilizers and so on. But if you are trying to do, use it for the purposes of direct dose formulations, like making teas, tablets and capsules, then you have a limitation. You have to apply stringent quality control because Contaminants like fertilizers, heavy metals, herbicides, and pesticides to be staying back in the plant will affect very seriously the product that, that you're going to manufacture. Luckily, the World Health Organization has given us uh, some guidelines that we can follow, which they call good herbal processing practices. And then for that of uh, production of uh, herbal dosage form. So those two manuals, as you like, is the Bible in this uh, area of uh, study. But the major issue that I also want to talk is the part where having talked about the farm. You say when you were in pharmacy schools, I'm sure that you must have heard about active medicinal substances, active ingredients, and so on. But in the modern day thinking of development, we want to get away from that whole single molecular entity and talk about network pharmacology. I will give example about how we have developed product based on network pharmacology and then uh, talked about reverse pharmacology, in which case you start from the human studies and go backwards to what you have. When you are talking about network pharmacology, you should be able to construct uh, networks of uh, systems. In this particular case, I use the anti-diabetic, for example, where you have ADP, that's anti-diabetic plant, uh, being themselves that they contain, and if you're able to do that, you can then analyze them and be able to tell you what kind of combination the ability to be able to, to stop the insulin uh, 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 lack of insulin uptake in the body, then you can be able to now look at what we call choke point and develop a product here too. Why am I saying this is important that either to we want to look at one particular molecule and discard the others. Right now, there are systems in the, in the, in the internet that you can borrow from. They are only for you to recreate the, uh, the wheel. Brenda is what we use normally and Spike. What it does, that it tells you all the pathways that have been dissolved, that have been resolved in the biological system that you can utilize. I use this example to show you that, for, for example, for Colabiron, which is a, a 
uh, 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 a compound we got from, from beta cola for a long time. You can be able to, by plotting, remove the anti hypertensive high, high, hepatitis component of it, from liver disease component of it, which is different from its use in mental health, which is different from its anti arthritic properties. And by properly extracting the product differentially, you can have the same product, the same beta cola being manufactured for different purposes. And actually, in real life, we have done just that. I want to give the examples of this uh, short talk using what we did during COVID-19 era. There are two components of treatment of COVID-19 that is involved. One is the immune support therapy, uh, which means that if you have a good immune system, you can be able to survive the, 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 the onset of the, of, the, of the infection. But the other aspect that I want to talk about is network macrology, which I mentioned earlier. We have products that will be able, since we don't know exactly the pathway of that particular disease, but we know that uh, antivirals can hit it. We know that com compounds that have an anti-cytokine storm can hit it. We also now know that the bradykinin pathway modulators also affect the prognosis of uh, COVID. So what we now do was to look at our inventory of plants who have, or compounds we have isolated earlier. As way back as 2015, we patented three compounds. Astonin from Picalimanitida, one of the plants the uh, prof showed earlier. Aculiva is a beta cola, beta cola in ebook is called Aculu. So the Aculiva is the active compound from, from beta cola and the andrographolite, which was mentioned earlier. So we now found that these plants, this is a compound from those plants. As far back as 2015, that was why we challenged WHO earlier on that COVID was not something new. We had had COVID since 2003. So that was when we approached the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Science and Technology and to say that, look, what we are having is nothing new, that we have something that can be utilized for its uh, containment. But since we are not listening to, we went uh, ahead to be able to develop the andrographolite and achilover from the plant. But we then we now went the shortcut, namely to now look at how come that this uh, product, this compound, we realize that there are three stages in the COVID uh, pathology. The beginning will be the first stage, the early infection. The second is the pulmonary phase, where people start having shortness of breath. The third phase is the hyperinflammatory phase. So what we were trying to do and what you succeeded in doing was trying to block the, 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 the movement from the stage one to stage three. And then we were lucky enough that we now had a detox tea, a tea that contained those two compounds, and andrographolide and uh, colaviron. Instead of waiting to now develop them as pure compound, we now decided to send it and then do the, the try to use uh, the, the network of that I, that, that I mentioned earlier. And by plotting, we will now be able to know the actual mechanism of action. The antiviral property was clear. The anti-inflammatory property was clear. And the guava uh, uh, compounds in, in them made us be able to do the AGE uh, modulation. Of course, may, much more importantly, is the fact that this compound, this product was able to inhibit the TGF beta, which means that the cytokine storm is stopped immediately. And those people who took the product uh, during the time we were, we were using them, no one single person, particularly those who are diabetic because of the, 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 the BDF beta, none of them died from, from COVID. So we now was able, we have encouraged to subject the product to clinical trials. The trial is going on at the University of Lagos. The trial team is incidentally is Professor Charles uh, Simone of uh, Namde Azikwe University. He's working with Professor Edemson of uh, College of Medicine of uh, Unilag. We have gotten all the approval needed for it. The study is about a year old now. The, the, per, per, the interim uh, out, output is encouraging that that is why we are uh, we have entered the second year of, of, the, of the trial. It's a long trial because people uh, are afraid to try something new, but we have been able to recruit enough patients. The other compound that I mentioned there, beta cola, on reverse pharmacology, that is starting from the end. Cola Viron actually I published the work in 1985. Since that time, about 200 publications have been made by different scientists on pharmacology, by chemical mechanism of action, especially in the University of Ibadan. What we then did was to move a step further, further and have beta cola as capsules. 
And what why I say is actually a reverse pharmacology is now that people are using it, and then we are now being able to, to note what, what beta cola can do. And we can fractionate beta cola into different drugs depending on what is the intended use. We are now currently working on a colaviron ST, which is colaviron that have been extracted out for people who have a mental uh, uh, uptake problems. We also develop immunovite based on the same uh, reverse phase of uh, pharmacology. I want to still say from what uh, um, Prof was mentioning earlier, I still laugh when people say that we are 70% dependent, that we have 70% of our products, that we, pro that we produce 30% actual local. We don't have any in, the, in actual comma. So we should say we are 100% dependent on others for the API. But in our group, we have already started talking about the acetylene I mentioned earlier. We isolated a good quantity, but for you to isolate just the, the 100 gram of acetylene, you need several tons, tons of the of the of, of, of the plant product, and that makes the second way of doing this is very difficult. We have also isolated artemisinin pure, which we are also using for 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 COVID-19 treatment. What I want to share with you is something else that we have done. You can do what is called biofarming. In this particular case, we have treated the king oyster mushroom to produce lovastatin for us. What it does that we think that it's growing is normal, but by feeding it with something it doesn't normally feed on, we were able to make it to produce lovastatin. And this particular project uh, is now going on to uh, that we are, being, we are trying to scale it up. Lovastatin, the people in, in this audience know what it is used for. It is a very important cardiovascular agent. It is heated to imported, but we can now make it. We have done a pilot stage uh, process. The raw material council has helped us that we are now trying to launch a major uh, production system to make global starting in the country. And so that the pharmacists can then have them uh, compounded into dosage forms. The atomicinin, which I mentioned earlier, we're also subjecting to another clinical trial. So far, my group has funded directly about four clinical trials, uh, two uh, for drug development, which are NAVDAC actually approved. Uh, this one has to be, will be done at, at the University of Abuja. And it's again the same professor, uh, uh, Charles A. Simone led group. We have again obtained all the permits necessary. We have done all the clinical uh, 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 things that we should do. And then we want to be able to now have this product to be able to be used for as uh, anti-COVID. As you know, WHO has also identified atemicinin as one of the products that they want to test globally. I think they're trying to test it now in about 50 something countries. And uh, we have already started uh, cultivating more, more atemicinin. And I'm glad that uh, Sheriff is here. We want to be able to have people to, to cultivate this plant. And I'm also glad that the, that the earlier speaker talked about the linkage between agriculture and farming. For right now, for example, cocoa farmers are in trouble because Chinese are now cultivating cocoa. But if we can have this uh, kind of crops that we are developing now, it will make our farmers to have to be able to compete with the rest of, of the world because they are, whatever they are producing, we can take up at that end. Let me briefly just tell you about us. I belong to Barrister Development Group. We actually have about seven different companies together. We do, we do scientific cooperation with uh, like minds. We do our own R&D and a very little business. We depend mainly on grants. And uh, this is our facility at Nsuka. It's a laboratory that is a uh, state of the art. This is our facility at uh, Bayon at Omona in Imo State. Uh, I think we pride ourselves as the only uh, GH GHPP standard uh, uh, center in anywhere in this country, except of course, NIPRI, which is the Pioneer Institute, the big brother that we have. But in other uh, companies, we can be able to take a product from scratch to the marketplace in, uh, in no time, as long as we have the protocol to follow in doing that. This is still the same place where we are working. I want to end the, the 10 minutes that I'm giving to thank these agencies that have helped us so much, the US NIH, the National Research Council for Foundation, but more importantly, the Raw Material Research and Development Council. That is the only Nigerian organization that has ever funded us. And we are very grateful. They came to us in times of need. When we, during the COVID uh, uh, 
uh, lockdown, we couldn't have access to our farms, but we had to ha get the help from them, and where we were able to encourage farmers to, to cultivate uh, andrographies for us in large enough quantity to meet the demand because people's life depended on that uh, detox tea. Uh, I want to uh, humbly tell you that all I've said is not only my work. My colleague and friend and brother for the past 28 years, Professor Elijah Shokumba and I have been partners. Uh, we have had a very fruitful uh, partnership. I could have said what I'm saying in pharmacology, which is not my main discipline without He's giving me uh, some background at, at, uh, lectures. I want to thank Chris Okunju, my former student who is now in our team in the US, Mike, uh, Mikel uh, Shimene, a Cameroonian who has our lab in, uh, at Tsunsuka. He was my former student. And then of course, our scientific advisory group. These are very eminent scientists globally. And then of course, uh, our staff members who have uh, supported the work. What I'm saying in effect, and finally, is the fact that from uh, pharma, from farm to the to pharmacy is, is uh, possible using two routes. But you have to, from the word go, make up your mind what you want to cultivate. Whether you want to cultivate product for API or whether you want to cultivate product for biomass. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, thank uh, you, uh, Professor Morrissey. We really appreciate you, and we thank you for really being patient with us for staying for three hours behind schedule. We'll take questions and answers for 15 minutes and we'll round off for today's session. You have heard that it is possible to have a standard formulation. We have seen how he started local clinical trials of atomicinine, because if you want to do it for a different disease, you must do clinical trials. So he's using atomicinine to treat COVID-19. That is why he's going for clinical trials. And you can see beautiful packaging. Even my friend, Professor Emeje, you can see the beautiful packs he has produced. And they have signed agreement with Mayor and Becker, producing Nifrisan. And they have signed agreement, if I am right, with the uh, Pitson, Pitson, and so many other groups, Naive and so on. So it is possible. I'm sure tomorrow on we listen to uh, Haji Azain of Sharif will definitely go back to farm to plant all the medicinal plants that we can produce our products locally. More importantly, he raised the issue of pharmaceutical active ingredient. It's one area. And unfortunately, again, he mentioned only raw material research institute supported him. So that means locally, we're not getting funding. I'm sure NAFSA will come into this. We lack funding, adequate funding as far as research and development is concerned. So the government and private sector must do something about research and development in Nigeria. So we are going to take, uh, I'm sure we are so tired, we are not going to bombard Professor Morris Yu or Emeje with so many questions, but we will take few so that by six we will round off. It's okay. I will take two here. One, one, four. So we have four. Finally, five. It's okay. Can you come out and. So let me start from that side. So please take note of all the questions. We are going to answer at once, it's not going to be one by one. Direct your question to whoever you want to ask. Okay, good, um, good afternoon. Um, all protocols observed. My question goes to the professor. Uh, but firstly... Which professor? We have two okay. professors. <laughs> okay, Professor Emeje. Okay. I don't really know what uh, position he holds in NIPRID. But NIPRID, I want to believe by its uh, constitution, the structure, uh, has a mandate given to him. But more importantly, I think what I found out in the missing link so far, because I've actually related with a lot of professors internationally, all over, and I found out that really the professors here are no different from the ones abroad. But what I find out is that, one, there is a lack of awareness and dissemination of research products. Frankly speaking, if I don't come to Rivers, I don't really know what you are doing. 
I don't really know. So I think that is one. Secondly, is that without us really. Okay, can you, can you help me? I don't If we don't really fix the issue of the prescriber, um, I, don't, I know that the crop of medical personnel we have now may not be comfortable because they seem to be Western-oriented minded. But until we start get people prescribing these herbal medicines, and I think what will help in prescribing it is an overwhelming data. Having done this, I think we should continue gathering data that will convince and pass, I mean, convince us beyond reasonable doubt about the efficacy and delivery of the products. Once that is fixed, and I think we are good to go. And lastly, for anybody that has worked in the civil service, which I have done, there is what, there is what is called uh, out of secrecy. You don't, uh, you don't talk against the government while you are in service. So I think that explains why people wait. On Thank, you Thank you very much. much. Yes. <laughs> there. Please don't give us oh, lecture. Yeah, Ask okay. question. Um, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Pharmacist Awal Al Qasim Ahmed. My question goes straight to the Professor Maurice Wu. Um, please, uh, I want sir, to shed more light on the export potentials of pharmaceuticals, uh, herbal pharmaceuticals. That's my question, sir. Okay, export potentials of the pharmaceuticals. Prof, have you heard the question? He wants to produce Moringa. <laughs> oh, at Miss Neal. Yes, I have the export potential. <laughs> Can he get dollars coming into <laughs> Nigeria through? Yes. Ashi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, I want to keep my phone. Um, uh, the audience, you know, I'm a reg I was a regulator, and I'm still a regulator. It's in my blood. Uh, just two things I want to say. First of all, is that the regulatory authority in Nigeria relates and works for Nigeria. The WHO is never a supranational regulatory authority. Decisions of WHO are reviewed in Nigeria and they must meet our needs before they are approved. That is one. Number two, I want to say to this, as Morris who also alluded to in his address, herbal medicinal products, they don't just come. They are grown either at home or in the wild. And before you can have them, you must have data. And the first uh, guideline Morris mentioned, which was guidelines on good collection, good, uh, uh, good collection practices, the GACP, Good agricultural and collecting practices, of which I was, I, Hashim, I am part of those who developed that guideline for WHO, stated clearly what you need to do, and those, what you have done, have to be documented before you present your product. Why I'm telling this to Martin, if he doesn't know, he should know now. If he does know, you know, they must be applied. Lastly, you know, for herbal medicinal products, the regulatory agent supports, and we have intervened before. I want to tell Martin, the Nipri Sun was presented for review at phase three, part one, to NAFDAQ. And I reviewed it with Professor Kule, and we took it back because the client space of only 80 was not enough for us to do the needful on the risks involved with a new product that we don't know. And therefore, we supported and lobbied for an additional 50 million naira be given to Nifrid to take the part two of the phase three trial. And it was at the same time, I tell you, the product was presented without an approval to conduct a clinical trial for it. And I tell you again, what happened at that time? We wanted to put it in the market. It was franchised outside the country, came back to Nipreet, and went back to the president, because someone met the president. 
And we have to support it because it's an indigenous product. And we support it. At the end of the day, there was a review, and Nyprison was given a listing permit. And for a listing permit, and for all the products he presented here, they don't have claim. They don't have claim. They are there, given listing, based on information given by Thank Professor you. Amege. Thank you, Hashim. But my question, no, yes. no. You know, people <coughs> will go. People will go with a different view. No, it's ask your question. You know, yes. mm. for 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 me to clarify this so that everybody will understand. Mm. A regulatory authority does its work, and this is what we have been telling. Even to Zainab, I have told Zainab severally that Zainab put your products before Nafdag. Let them remove the suspicion, because your products have to be certified to be safe and of good quality. It is not you alone doing it. There Please, Hashim, let's ask the question. We have to close at six. My, my question to yes. Professor Imeji, mm. I want to know, of all the products he has, does he have a full registration or a listing? If he has a listing, does he review its performance and report to NAVDAC, either or... NAVDA captures it within the post marketing surveillance or a phase four, you know, wider space of use. That's my question to you. Thank you very much. But he has mentioned that at Missinin, it's at the stage of clinical trials at University Teaching Hospital no. Abuja. So he has not gone for more than clinical trials. Ooh. So, uh, Oyechi, no, you didn't raise your hand. That one, Seven. final. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Please try and be brief. Man is, Either the answer man the question is just a, or not. By six, I'll close. Mine is a comment. Uh, in, the private, in the private sector, some of us are interested in uh, working on some herbal products. And uh, particularly myself, we've been slow. But here, in, that's why I stayed back. Uh, hearing all of this will spoil me and uh, I want to encourage uh, our professor it's, it's not late okay some of us have spoken to you before uh, Professor Wu was my teacher still, I'm still close to him and uh, I hope it's not lost that's what I want to say to, to both of you and to encourage other people here who are like myself, one leg in, one leg out, is saying we need to step up. And I agree with you. Thank you very much. So, Onyechi, you are not going to the farm. Last one. You are not going to the farm. You want them to start something, then you buy. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> A partnership. Thank you. It's okay. My professor name is... Wanang, don't be professor here. Just ask your question. Don't give lectures, please. My name is Professor Wanang, sir. Uh -huh. Mine is not a question. It's a comment. Okay, brief. I am into research in herbal medicines, and I could remember when I gave my Nagura lecture, an old person, very rich in Nigeria, invited me to his house. And he mentioned to me, while we were 18, that his major problem was libido. And he asked whether I, was in, whether I had any drugs for libido. And of course, I was into reproductive pharmacology. And I was narrating to him the list of drugs that he could take that can improve his libido. And he was there with another rich politician in Abuja. The other politician stood up and said, Wanang, do you know what I need to improve my libido? Wallahi kudini kesu. Directly translated, what increases his libido is money. That even if a woman is naked before him and he has no money, he will never have erection. In essence, if there is no money, what we need in herbal medicine development is money. If not, they will never have any erection to have any reproduction. Then, sir, federal ministry or the federal government should try to expunge a, the, the directorate of traditional medicine and create an entire ministry of federal ministry of traditional medicine. If we really want to make any progress.
Then we can have a minister of traditional medicine, probably Zena beside me. Let her be the minister at the same level the ministers. So that when they are debating and competing or arguing on contemporary issues, then she can submit and federal government should equally give her the funds and the attention and the necessary tools needed to move. Research and development, research and finances are the key and only hope to progress in herbal medicine and traditional medicine in Nigeria, which I can tell you, the whole world is looking at Africa. If other countries have 10% of what Africans have in terms of herbs, they will never think of conventional medicine. I rest my case. So you want herbal and traditional medicine. And you think lo local herbalists will not fight you to own the ministry. Because I know they went so much into trying to get a bill which has been approved, isn't it, um, Zainab? They are working on traditional medicine. When you bring bone setters and all other things, I think it will be a problem. We want herbal to be really promoted. But at the same time, uh, it's okay, lastly, give uh, president-elect of NAFSA. So we are going to capture that. That's president-elect. Because he's not wearing a suit from America. <laughs> Just 30 seconds. Thank you for the opportunity. I wasn't really going to ask a question. I wanted to arrange a meeting between you and our NAPSA group so we can have a real civilized conversation because there's a lot of potential in everything that you've said. Things that need to be taken seriously. Thank and, you. NAPSA is have interested. What we want to do. finance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they bring it. They want we'll to bring, discuss. They will bring dollars. You can't put words <laughs> in my mouth, but there's potentials. Thank you very much. Thank you. So you are at meeting immediately. Plenty NAFSA dollars. is interested. <laughs> they want to work with Life Read or Professor Major. I want to start with Professor Morris Ew because he has short, simple, direct questions. One, export potentials. Secondly, are your product listed or registered by NAPDAC? At what stage? Yeah, the export, yeah, the export uh, issue is very clear. We don't have enough of the plant materials to export to anybody. We don't even have medicinal plant farm. We have four farms ourselves. We used to export andrographics to India, but we couldn't have enough to satisfy our own need. Right now, if you, man, if you cultivate all the entire Lagos state with uh, cocoa, uh, coconut uh, uh, fruit, you still have enough market for it. Just the veggie coconut oil alone can sustain a whole industry. The idea here is that we should try to add value to them. Then the second problem we have with the export issue is that of quality control. Uh, our products live here with a lot of uh, box, uh, cockroaches, and so on. There is not enough phytosanitation going on. People complain, but they don't, they don't really do the right thing. So right now, the issue is actually that of uh, limitations. We don't have the the size to be able to export to anybody. We don't have the crops at all to export. So uh, we don't have the farm to start with. So that's the problem. Then the second issue in terms of, uh, of, of also that what we are doing, we export our product, but what we export are not raw materials. As I say, we have uh, exported the uh, API. We made Astonian for a pharmaceutical company that is uh, uh, trying to get the FDA to, to be able to uh, give them license to be able to produce their product. We're also producing at Mistinin. So we're, uh, we're also producing now uh, Novastatin. So we have three APIs in our, in our, in our kitty. Those ones are actually meant for export uh, market. We, we should go for those things that are more difficult to actually synthesize. Uh, those ones we can export. But if we go for things like ginger and all that, uh, they are, they are in, in good demand, but they have to be in large enough quantity to make it worth the people who are taking it. Then on the second question about NAVDAC, yes, most of the what we are doing, because the drug development process is very slow, it's a, it's a tutorial. So what we do, what we call bicyclic approach. While we are trying to wait for the products which are gone through, through clinical trials, we also want to make money in the process. And so what we then did is to have those phytomedicines. We are very happy, comfortable with the NAVDAC uh, issue. They, we have to be careful of the fact that these products are going to be used by human beings. So whatever stringent the measures are, the better, so that we'll be able to have proper clinical trials done. We have that permission before we even conduct the clinical trials. 
And that was why I said, we have done four so far. Two with NAFDA permission. Two, we are doing it for to be able to know whether the products are useful or not. These are two different studies and then two different types of studies. So right now we have uh, approached NAFDA on trying to register two products, one with uh, NIMET pharmaceuticals and one on our own, uh, which we are doing with water. FDA, we also have two products be before the FDA through our, our American partners. As I said, those ones are Astonin for the API and then uh, an enriched Artemisia annual product for COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. So Hashim, are you satisfied? <laughs> So you're okay now. Imagine two minutes to answer all the questions. Ah. Oh yes, it's possible. You are a professor. Let me see if you are not a professor. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. I have 14 questions, and I'm going to answer them this way. Yes, sir. Uh, so I will answer them this way, and let me just start by thanking uh, pharmacist chief uh, Ike for the encouragement and for the words. Thank you, sir. And to our friends from the America, thank you. We are going to uh, have our meeting. Uh, thank you, Professor Wanang, for your comment uh, and for that, um, you know, thinking inside the box on what to do. That was a thought inside the box, not outside the box. And uh, we should be thinking about it. Um, so let me go this way. For my friend who said he doesn't know the position I occupy, I occupy at Nypreet, the only person that is bigger than me at NIPRID is the Director General of NIPRID. Therefore, I speak from point of information and knowledge and with authority. Number two, lack of awareness in what NIPRID does. We do not have a mandate, or, we are not a school of journalism. We are an, a pharmaceutical research institute. Did Oxford University go to television to tell you they have a scene? No, it was industry driven. So the argument that Nypreet is not on television, is not talking about what they are doing, does not hold water at all. Where countries, in countries where people have pride, national pride, where they see medicine as an instrument of security, they will decide. Okay, sir. Then until doctors prescribe, no way. You don't need to wait for doctors to prescribe. Community pharmacies here, the GNLD products in your pharmacy, the Tasli products in your pharmacy, the Tianxi products in your pharmacy that are imported from China and India and Malaysia and Bangladesh, is, are doctors prescribing them? And you are all, all of you are drinking them. Oh, those, how many of you here did not drink, did not drink those nutraceuticals during COVID-19? You were hiding and drinking them. You don't talk while you are in government. Okay, I don't know that. I'm in government and I'm talking. Aja is in government. This Aja is a director in Federal Minister of Health. And she is talking. And she will talk tomorrow. You will hear now. Export potential is not my own. WHO requirements must meet our need. That one is, 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 is too rinchy. Herbal medicinal plants are grown at all. You must gather data. Um, um, fortunately, you have retired from government. That means you are not less than 60 years. I schooled in Amadubelo University, Zaria. And I know that any of you from northern Nigeria who is seated here, who is 60 years old, you drank concussion. You drank. Which data, which data did, you, did you read before you drank those things? Which data did you drink? Which data, came, which data did we have on COVID-19 vaccine before we started using them? Why did countries have to sign indemnification agreement? You signed indemnification that, look, take this vaccine. Anything that happened to you, you cannot hold our company responsible. You are on your own. It's our own that we are, you drank and you, you, you are alive. You retire from government. You are telling us that with data. Which data? Which data? Your job in NAVDAC, your job in NAVDAC is to streamline, is to streamline how we can bring data. That's your job in NAVDAC. Streamline. You say you develop guideline. Which guideline? Which guideline? You say you and Professor Kunde. Where is Professor Kunde? Where is my yoga? Let him come and say here now that uh, it's him and uh, Hashim that develop guideline. Which guideline? Which guideline? Which guideline? One of, the one of the errors we make, let me tell us this. Sorry, sir. 
what, let me tell you this. I, 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 they, I entered lab in King's College, London. I met a professor of pharmaceutics. And I told him, sir, I brought some plant extracts from Nigeria. I want you to help me in, I want to do sustained release formulation. It's a professor of pharmaceutics that we have all been quoting before we had the privilege of seeing him. He said, no, my young boy, I am a professor of characterization. Pharmaceutics, so the one that we are doing here, that you are the one doing characterization, you are the one doing formulation, you are the one doing everything. The man says, only characterization he does. One of our problems is that you do what is not your own. If you are in NAVDAC, do NAVDAC work. Don't go and look for NIPRID work to do. If we find out, if we investigate the reason why you decided to go and do work in another agency now, we will know the reason, no? Do you have registration or listing? It's semantics. Registration or listing is semantics. What is, a, what is registration? I went to a grammar school. What is registration? You, you gave somebody approval. Okay, you gave approval. Don't call it listing. Don't call it registration. You, didn't you give approval? Your guideline said that uh, it is only safety. Once you do safety, it is safe. You can use it. It doesn't matter what you are claiming. So let's be drinking kunu for COVID now because it's water not safe. Water is safe. Kunu is safe. All of them are safe. You do LD15, no animal will die. Let's drink it for COVID because we want to dwell on safety. So, <laughs> okay, finally. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Clap for a <Avenger. laughs> Honestly, Emeje, I must concur. Hashim is still drinking concoction. <laughs> He's still drinking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, the purpose of this session is to build bridges between the industry and researchers and find a way of get funding for research and development. And I believe we have been motivated, we have been shown the road, we have built the bridges, I have seen potentials, I'm so happy NAFSA is taking off the multi-billionaire Onyechi of Alpha Pharmacy. I'm also interested <laughs> as a chairman. <laughs> I will surely promote. When I was a president, I tried by all means to bring the industry, yes, the industry and knife read so that they can commercialize the products. There is no need to have researchers sleeping on the shelves. When you go, you see how they formulate, and local people who don't know anything, you see the kind way they formulate tablets, no shape, rectangular, all kind of shapeless tablets, and people are taking. So we have to help people standardize, formulate. I want to, on behalf of the organizers, the president and Nick, to really thank you very much, you and Professor Morrison, for this very brilliant and scintillating, energetic, productive lectures. We are well informed. We are going back home well informed. And don't mind all the other side of Emeji. That is how he presents papers. He doesn't mean harm. It's a very easy going. He's not harmful. <laughs> don't be threatening. <laughs> I can see he was afraid. The man with heart. <laughs> then when you say you are number two. <laughs> so can we give them another round of applause for this wonderful session? Yes. Come on, get a hug. Congratulations. Well done. Well done. Thank you, sir. Well done. So, uh, since he's only alone here, <laughs> all those who ask questions should come up for group <laughs> autograph. <laughs> Group photograph. Yes, for a group photograph, please. Namsa, come. Are you coming with the guidelines? Okay, come as well.
So while the group photograph is going on, I will make just two announcements. First is that the general meeting of the Association of Public Health Pharmacists of Nigeria would, would have their meeting here at this venue immediately after this session. The second announcement is that the National Association of Pharmacists in the Academia, NAPA, Uniport branch, invites all NAPA members present to a meeting tomorrow, 2nd November, 3rd November, 2021, venue, Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences Building, Uniport, time 12 noon prompt. Thank you. Amazing session. Let's give them a round of applause, please. I told you it was going to be explosive, and indeed it was. So, see you tomorrow. Uh, registration continues, and we have several breakout sessions tomorrow as well. And of course, remember the tennis competition, 4 p.m. every day, just behind here. Yeah, I mean, just the room beside beside the dining room here. You have them 4 p.m. at day. The competition is going on, and there are cash prizes to be won. 100,000, 50,000, 80,000, and 40,000. Okay. Thank you so much. Please, members of the Association of Public Health Pharmacists, can we just quickly come up front so that we can have a quick meeting? Association of Public Health Pharmacists of Nigeria, let's just speak. please quickly come up front so we can have a quick meeting. I know it's been a long day. It's going to be a brief meeting preparatory to us having an AGM next year where we'll be having elections and um, a change of guard. I know. Please, if you are here for the public health pharmacist meeting, could I just see a show of hands?